black and gold fans, college football fans, welcome in or welcome back to the Touchdown Black and Gold Vlog, where we examine, discuss, celebrate, and honor all things college football across the entire college football landscape, but with a very special emphasis on our beloved black and gold squad of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome back, guys. I'm your usual host, Blair Parks. And as you can tell, I am on location. I have left the creature comforts of the show me state. I am on location here in Wisconsin, about an hour, a stone's throw away from Madison, home of the, uh, of the Badgers. I'm deep in enemy territory, but I really shouldn't say that. I mean, the people of the Dairy State are very welcoming, very friendly. I was just telling, we were just talking yesterday about something. So it's great to be up here. I've made a little bit of a uh, little road trip. Obviously I'm here playing a lot of golf, having some fun. And that's what inspired this week's very special episode. Before I say more, I know I've already lost some of you because I get it, especially you ladies. I'm joined by a very special guest host today. This is one of the guys who was one of the original uh, family members, subscribers, supporters of the channel. My good friend, Brett, I'll give you a little bit of background on him. He is a fighting Illini fan. He's welcome here, just like all of you, uh, all of you college football fans are welcomed here because we know as Hawkeye fans, no one's perfect. It's okay. You know, everybody makes mistakes, Brett, but it's great to have you back. Say hello to the people. Say hi to the people watching. How's everybody doing? One thing Blair forgot to mention was that I am the first time champion, I believe. Yes. Of the guest pickup tournament. Yes, so he that was. That is me. Yep. Um, this year is coming back home. Yep, Brett's been involved since day one with the channel. We go way back, college buddies. Um, and obviously, he brings a lot to the show. He loves college football. But you can tell right now on the skin, he definitely is the eye candy of the show. He makes this look a whole hell of a lot better. So I know I lost some of you. Come out of your trance. Okay, I get it. <laughs> but getting back to what I brought up. Yeah, so the road trip idea, something I've always wanted to do. And this is the first time I've ever done this kind of an episode on the channel. Upcoming, this will be the third season in existence of the Touchdown Black and Gold vlog. And I've never done a road trip um, episode. So that's what we're going to bring at you today is this is going to be my, if I had a choice, if I was well off enough, had the availability and uh, the funds to do so, hey, these are the, the games and the sites on campus that I would go to each and every week during the upcoming 2023 regular season. So this does not include week zero. It doesn't include championship weekend or bowls, just weeks one through 13. And I thought I might as well bring Brett along. This is gonna be excellent. We haven't revealed to each mm -hmm. other where we're going, but I'll, go, I'll share with you guys the criteria here. Just hang on one sec. But before I say more, thank you for all you've done for the channel, all of your support, sub subscribers, subscribers. Bleh. I do my own. We do our own stunts here in the Touchdown Black and Go vlog, as you guys know. Sub uh, subscribers are up, views are up, rates, everything, comments. Thank you for all you've done. But continue to spread the word. I want to find more college football fans just like you. All are welcome here. Please, and as always, I ask, beg, and encourage you to get involved. We want to hear your feedback. Is there locations that maybe we forgot? Or do you think, hey, that place is overrated? The hell with those guys, whatever. I want to hear from you, the college football family and the black and gold family. All right? So here's the criteria. What we decided to do, because I didn't want to do any uh, neutral sites. So sorry if you're expecting week one, us to be in Orlando for LSU, Florida State, it ain't gonna happen. Or down in the Cotton Bowl for Oklahoma, Texas. Nah, you might as well stop watching now. Or if, watch, well, please don't stop watching. I'm just telling you right now. Or if you're expecting the, uh, the world's largest outdoor cocktail party Florida, Jacksonville. Oops, they don't, they don't call it that anymore. Oops, sorry. So that's not going to be on these lists, guys. We're going to on-campus sites. We want to get the full. Um, we want to get the full experience. We want to be completely immersed 
in these college towns, the stadiums, the fields, the pageantry, the history, everything. All right. So no neutral sites. And the other thing about sites, we are only going to go to a school near you once. So we can never go back, for example, back to Tuscaloosa twice. So we're only going to go to a school near you once during these 13 weeks. And the other last rule that we decided to work in, you know, being fans of Iowa and Illinois, we're going to go to at least one road game that involves either Iowa or Illinois. All right, so that's the criteria. So hopefully so far you're on board. I think you're really gonna like this, uh, this episode. It was a lot of fun. This is one that I'm like, man, it's great to be inspired by coming up here to Wisconsin. So without further ado, Brett, you ready to do it? Here we go. All right, let's get it. Boom. All right, so here we go. Coming hot out of the gate. Week one, and this is kind of a down year for week one compared to the last few seasons. I mean, I'm still excited. I mean, <laughs> seriously, right now my blood pressure is boiling thinking about opening weekend, but it's just not a lot of great matchups, especially when you take out of uh, the equation for this episode, not going to Orlando for LSU, Florida State. All right. So, Brett, you're the guest of honor. Where's your first destination week one? Where are you going? First? So, as I bounced around for the, the multiple weeks here, variety of reasons I'm going to places. One's locations, one's cities that are close I could go visit, one are schools I want to see, one are schools I want to make fun of. Yeah. Um, but for the first week, I am actually not on a road trip. I'm on a, on a plane. Ooh, okay. I'm going to be going to Hawaii to watch Stanford in Hawaii week one. Ooh, he's going to the islands. And that's something that Brett here is a world traveler. All right, I'm telling you. So, he kind of mentioned this a little bit, but I kind of figured that's where he's going to go. I mean, hell, he's trying to, to uh, ship me off and kidnap me to Hawaii <laughs> next week. But I want to get home and see the wife and kiddos, though. So that's excellent. That's great. So that's where I'm heading. I'm predicting you're heading to Boise State, Washington. Ooh. Was my guess. I like that. You know, that was on my short list. All right. And that was actually the runner up. But I've got to start off week one. I've got to see the Coach Prime experiment in person because, quite frankly, I think it's going to flame out bad. So I've got to see this. So I'm going to go ahead and travel down to Fort Worth, down for in the uh, in Texas, where everything's bigger, to check out Colorado at TCU. Pay homage to last year's Cinderella story out of nowhere, crash in the college football playoffs. And plus to see, you know, the purple, uh, the purple chaps of the dance squad too. That's not bad. You know, sorry. So once again, I want to get the full experience, guys. All right. So I'm going Fort Worth, Colorado TCU week one. What you think? So, so Colorado will come up for me. Just a preview for later on for me uh -huh. as well. Similar rationale, just a little bit different take on it. Okay. All right. Excellent. I'll go and start off now. How about that week? That two? sounds we'll good. Sounds good. Alternate. Now week two. Now, here's the thing. There were a few options, but the biggest one that day, I think, was, I think, Ala Alabama hosting Texas, I believe, is week two, okay? And I'm not going there. I'm not because, once again, I want to go to some other place. And maybe I'll be going to Tuscaloosa later in the year. But you know what? I got to check this out for myself. I love the history of this non-Power 5 school. I mean, they've gotten big wins over Power 5 schools and bowls regular season. And they're hosting now probably the other team, their counterpart that had the most success as a non-Power 5. Maybe other than Cincinnati getting to the playoff. But now they're in the Big 12 at the Power 5 level. I'm going to the Potato State. I'm going to go to the Smurf Turf. I want to watch UCF the Knights at Boise. It's Boise is how the locals say it. Boise State to get a brain aneurysm looking at the blue turf. So I'm going to Boise for that ball game week two. How about you? All right, week two, I was I was anticipating you wanting to see what is going to be going on in Evanston, Illinois. Ooh, wow. When UTEP wow. comes to Northwestern for the first home game, will there be a football season in, in Evanston? There's been talk as a, in the radio here. There's been people saying, I believe uh, Greeny was one of them, saying if they cancel the season, 
as a Northwestern guy, he's okay with that, given the mess that is there right now. And I believe what this guy's telling you. He's waxing poetic. He's Chicagoland's where he lives. He's a native of Chicagoland. He listens to a lot of more local sports talk than I do. So if Brett says that's a possibility, especially what's going on there, and that's something that we don't have to get into on this episode, but what an absolute mess and tragedy at Northwestern. Yeah, okay, and, so you thought as, I'd be going there. As, right. as a team with no coach, two weeks from opening season, well, you week two, I was guessing you were going to go see what's going there. Also to come visit Chicago and visit me as yeah. well. Um, I'm going to Miami. Miami. So I went all Very the way nice. out to Hawaii. Oh, and now man. I'm going all the way to Miami. So about as far as we could get, um, since there's no teams in Alaska, that is as far as we could get, I think. Yeah. Um, Texas A&M, uh, Miami. Um, Taking your talents to South Beach. Going to South Beach. <laughs> Here we go. Going to South Beach. Love that. All right. So that's where I'm headed. Any other reason why? I mean, just because the U, you know, the history there, just because, hey, it's a... It's kind of an exotic location, uh, South Beach. Similar to you, the, the <laughs> Alabama location, Texas. I'd love to see Texas get smacked around, but oh, look at that! I can't Low blow. go to Alabama because I'm going to go there later on. So okay. I had to uh, – Miami, he was on some other options too down the road, but uh, Texas A&M, uh, Miami uh, is where I landed. Okay. Texas A&M is going to come up with me later too. I know you're a big fan of our boy Jimbo oh, Fisher, which – well, once again, you've heard me talk about Coach Jimbo Fisher. That could be a full episode we could have here, but I'm going to leave it that. We'll let that just kind of burn on the back burner a little bit longer there. To be determined there, what's going to happen with Coach Jimbo down in Aggie Land? We'll have to wait and see. But <laughs> uh, so Jimbo's not my not my guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're transition to somebody else who I yes. do like, and I don't think you're you're a huge fan. Maybe I don't. I shouldn't say I like them. I like the, the theater that comes with my week three matchup. Okay. Like Colorado State at Colorado. Ooh, a battle um, of the Rocky State. Okay. I believe Colorado's going to be bad. Um, yeah. I think they'll be better than last year, maybe. Uh, but being able to go out to Colorado, one great location to go to. Um, wish it was later in the year, so I go skiing. But being able to see what they do once against the world traveler. Once, once, once they go and uh, play that game against an in-state rival, Will the temperature get turned up a little bit if they struggle in that game and struggle down at TCU, which I expect them to do? You know, I love that. And I I thought you were going to go someplace else, actually. I, I think I know where you're going. Yeah, I was thinking that you were going to maybe go check out your fighting Illini at Kansas a Friday night. But I love this because it's, I don't even know what the state motto of Colorado is. You probably should know. Let's just call it the Rocky Mountain State. That's probably <laughs> what it is. Sorry if I'm offending any of you Coloradians. I think it's what Coloradian. it Coloradians, I don't know. But I love that because that could potentially be their only win, I think. Colorado, I think, could win two to three, four games max. But I love that. That could be really their only win. Just like you a little bit ago said, I could maybe go to Northwestern mm -hmm. week two. That could be Northwestern's potential only victory over UTEP. But then again, they do play Towson late in the year. So that could be Northwestern's. And that would be their first win on the continent in two seasons. <laughs> this one last year in Ireland. That would be great. I love that. But, all right. So I like that week uh, three location. I, I've got you down at Mississippi State LSU was my guess. Ooh. I love that. I'd love to go down to Starkville. I might still, but not this week. This is a little bit of a one that's off the radar, but I love it because I love rivalry games. I have got to go east, my friend to the Appalachians, and I've got to go see this year's edition of a rivalry renewed. It came back last year. Old Big East rivals, they would play every year. That's right, I want to check out the backyard brawl with mm. Pitt at West Virginia at Morgantown, and if uh, the uh, Mountaineers are victorious, hand in hand, sing Country Roads by the late great John Denver, I'm going to go to Morgantown and check out the Backyard Brawl. That's what I want to go check out. Great that, rivalry back. That's a good matchup. My, my hesitation with that and why I didn't I, – I looked over that quickly was, is West Virginia going to be worth watching? That's true. I think Pitt's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, Under the radar, good. But it's a big uh, year for Neil Brown, the coach. He's on the hot seat directly. Win now or you're done. Yeah. Morgantown, I'm, I'm watching you. I didn't forget about you. You know, plus I love their mascot. I love the human mascots. I mean, I, I think he's just called the Mountain Man. I don't even know if he has a name, but his uh, coonskin cap and his uh, his musket. I love that. I love that. So, and that might come up. That might be another theme here for one of mine later. All right. 
So I think it's you now, right? Week four. Where is Brett going? No, it's you. You. You got the even. Oh, okay. All right. So week four. And wow, you talk about... This was ridiculous. This week, week four, and then rivalry week 13 of Thanksgiving weekend, you talk about tough to pick a matchup. Not tough as far as there's so many, but hey, when do I want to see this team mm -hmm. at their home or not? That's what made it difficult. And for me, I mean, there were so many. Being an Iowa fan, I had, this is my, to go ahead and mark off my Iowa trip. I'm going to Happy Valley. I mean, I've got to. It's a, uh, a primetime kickoff, already been announced. It's historic. It's going to be the first ever Big Ten conference game on NBC. Whiteout, which we all know, I mean, 100,000 plus of your closest friends there in Beaver Stadium. Iowa has gone there. Their last Whiteout game, they did go there and get it done. And they have a good history at winning at Beaver Stadium. I don't expect a Hawkeye victory, but... I think there's a chance. Early in the season, new quarterback at Penn State. But that's where I got to go. I mean, there were so many, but I, I had to go to Happy Valley. Just had to do it. And, and this is one of the weeks that Blair gave me this idea what we're going to be doing about 72 hours ago. We've golfed a couple times. We've seen yep. Oppenheimer, so we've, we've been busy. My game's getting better. Isn't but it? I love this was a layup. Your game's getting a lot better. Oh, I, this, was a, this was a layup for where Blair was going to go. He said, I got to go to an Illinois game, road game. There aren't many good options. I got to think about where Blair might go. He, mm -hmm. Penn State checked it. I had it written down right here. So I'm at least going to be one for 13. Okay, there we go. We and, got that right. And for me, I'm heading to Notre Dame. We're going to go see Notre Dame. I mean, how could you not go see Ohio State at Notre Dame? So the, the hard I mean, part, Notre Dame was multiple other options down the road. Weeks 4, 7, yeah. 8, and 11 kind of all were were tough because yeah. they and, and that's one thing I forgot to say. Excuse me. Thanks for the reminder. Repeat. Another criteria is we tried to only see teams once, but that was really, really going to be a stretch. So I told Brett, let's try to limit the teams. If we see the same team twice, three times, that's it. So we want to try to spread the love a little bit too. All right, keep going. Sorry well, to cut you off. One home man. game at a particular location. So Notre yeah. Dame, there was down the road. I was yeah. looking. I had to go Ohio State here, Notre Dame. You got um, to. I was tempted to go Penn State, Iowa, um, but I think from a Iowa might have big Big Ten implications, but the Ohio State Notre Dame game um, is going to be a big game to set up the rest of the season. There we go. I had you pegged for this game. You're a Midwest guy, Chicagoan. I mean, hell, you're not the two biggest brands in the Midwest, maybe other than Michigan. The two biggest brands, recruiting uh, mm -hmm. fan bases, everything. The tradition of how can you not so i had you pegged for this game i just did i think that was a layup for me too there so we go week, week four we got hey, look what a good looking guy i mean it's like paulie walnut style i love that you know with the, i love it this is great please feel free once again like share subscribe get involved let us know what you think excellent so hey i got one of yours there we go that De definitely had you pegged for this game so the, the week five week five oh man this is when i had both of us going the same spot um, and a big matchup in the SEC. I'm not a huge – the SEC best conference, um, best recruiting consistently. People going to the NFL, I'm, not, I'm just not a huge fan of that brand, though, as a Big Ten guy. Yes. But I have both of us going down to Mississippi for LSU Mississippi. Absolutely. Ding, 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 ding. We got it. I mean, I – because I've heard nothing but good things. And have I been to an SEC game officially? Yes. I live <laughs> – I live in Missouri. I'm very close to Columbia, where I live, the University of Missouri. But is that a true SEC experience? I don't know. No. No, probably not. I mean, probably not, but it is an SEC game, but not experience. And what have you heard about just the experience of the uh, the Grove there at Ole Miss? It, it's something of classic and, story. Yeah, everything down there, um, bow ties, people getting dressed up, very nice, high-end production having chandeliers so, in your uh pop-ups that's it's, great it's it's from from the from Can't what wait. we hear that would be couldn't fun, wait that'd be a fun game plus it'll be a good game oh yeah absolutely you're gonna have an lsu team that's gonna be top 10 no doubt here probably a top eight team when the official rankings come out soon but yeah i had us going down to oxford too had to yeah, i i'm not a huge brian kelly fan i've never seen a coach treat players and and officials the way he does and get away with it but you're going to be seeing them a lot this year from what I have done. Okay. All right. And maybe you will too with what I've got. 
I mean, what, you, you don't like uh, Brian Ke Kelly and his family heading down to uh, Baton Rouge? Hey, that's the icing on the cake. <laughs> there it is. All right. So Oxford, here we come. Yeah, I mean, plus, that's really going to kind of officially pop my SEC cherry. So that's what it is. Sorry. You know, it's PG. It's PG-13. I tried to keep it. It's, it's all right. It's okay. So there, SEC, my experience, it's finally there. Couldn't wait. And I got to get down there. At some point, we got to get to Oxford. I just do. All right. So we got uh, week, week six, six next. Okay. Well, week six to me was also kind of a difficult one. Uh, I ended up going with, uh, let's see. Hey, don't be cheating now. I mean, this is it. I finally had to uh, get back to A&M because I did mention they'll be coming up. And the home of the 12th band, Kyle Field down in College Station. I have always wanted to get down there, even though I'm not crazy about the head band. But week six, you've got Alabama traveling to College Station. I believe this is their uh, first return trip since Jimbo Fisher and those boys knocked off Coach Saban last time they were there in College Station. So can't wait to see. Maybe that'll happen again. I mean, do I enjoy seeing Alabama lose? I do. But do I enjoy Jimbo Fisher losing more? Probably. Okay. So, but I, def I definitely want to get down there with the cadets, the pageantry of Kyle Field. So that's where I'm heading. I'm going down to the A&M Bama game. So I originally forgetting, I, I had that one, by the way. Oh, there you go. Um, Look at that. Originally forgetting the, the, that we had to be on campus. I had the Oklahoma, Texas. Okay. Um, but we'll flip it over to um, Alabama, Texas A&M as well. Okay. There we go. Uh, I'm seeing Alabama a few times, um, probably more than I want. Seeing LSU as well a few times more than I want. But for this game, I think that's that week. There's no doubt that's the that's the place to go. It is absolutely awesome. Were there any other really good? I'm looking here. I thought there were some other potentials. The the next week you got some games. Oh yeah. What I, oh, yeah, because that was the big game that week is the uh, neutral side game down in the Cotton Bowl, the Red River uh, right. rivalry. So that's where all eyes are going to be. But not us. We're going on campus now, guys. No neutral side stuff, okay? Even though that one is kind of like a legitimate neutral site, but still in Texas. I mean, it can't be a neutral site. You know, I'm sorry. Hey, come play Georgia in the uh, the Mercedes-Benz Dome in yeah, Atlanta. You know, is that a neutral site? That's come not on. That's not a fair fight. It's not. not a fair fight. Come on. But week seven, here we go. I, I'm it. predicting you're heading to Notre Dame, USC, is where I think you're going to be going to. Again, another Midwest visit for you. Um, I'm going up to Washington. So I've hit, I've hit Hawaii. I've hit Miami, Colorado, back to the Midwest. Now I'm in the south to Texas, and now I'm up to Washington. All right. For Washington versus Oregon. Going up to Seattle, huge and, you and, know, epic and, stories. And will there be a, a possible Heisman Trophy candidacy being built as we're in a week halfway through the season at that point in time with the quarterback. Yeah. I mean, Michael Penix, if he can stay healthy, he's going to be there. He may, he may be one of my four Heisman Trophy uh, finalists coming up in my next week's episode, one of my favorite ones I do every year, my crystal ball and uh, predictions episode. So Michael Penix may be one of my Heisman Trophy uh, finalists. Yeah, what a great game. I mean, and you always hear, and I'm not a big NFL guy. Brett here can verify that. I've told you guys. But when you watch Seattle games, I mean, the crowd is just raucous. Yeah. They're out of control. It's loud. So going up there to Husky Stadium, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. And I may or may not be seeing Washington in action this year. You have to wait and see. But for me, you're absolutely right. I had to go to Notre Dame. This is my chance. There were so many games in South Bend to pick. But I've got this. Traditional rivals, USC at Notre Dame. You nailed another one. Congratulations. But all the pageantry, touchdown Jesus. I mean, the stripes in the end zone. And another human mascot, the Fighting Irishman, right? I love that. I mean, and all of the... Uh, the Heisman Trophy uh, winners there, the Four Horsemen, Newt Rockney, Lou Holtz. I mean, it goes on and on there at South Bend. I mean, I've never been a huge, you know, Notre Dame fan, but it's hard. Nobody can sit there and argue where they stand as far as the traditionalism of college football. They really are, in a way, college football. They're the, in a way. They're the biggest, most consistent brand. Yes. Over time, I think. Yes. Yep. Thank you, NBC. Yes. 
who, and I do think within five years, they're going to be in the Big Ten. Asking for $90 million now is what they want of a new TV revenue, does the Irish, the Fighting Irish. That's only Big Ten moolah. Within five years, they're going to be in the Big Ten. Just saying right now, it's going to happen. It probably should happen already. But anyway, we got week eight. Week eight was kind of a tough one for me. Now, where I thought you could have went... I was at the same spot. Just give you a heads up on that. Okay. All right. I mean, there's... Uh, well, Illinois has got Wisconsin. That's a big game here, especially locally. But for me, week eight... Man, I... What did I get down to? I had to go, at this point, Penn State at Ohio State. That's where I went. I mean... I was just telling Brett today, and this might be crazy talk. I don't, don't take this to the bank. Don't take it to it Vegas or Atlantic talk. City. I am not making this official. This is unofficial. Unofficially, maybe official. I have to wait till next week's episode. But could we not, I think, potentially see not one, but two, but three Big Ten teams in the college football playoff? And a round robin between those three beasts of the East, Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State, if they all have one loss, or maybe one of them goes undefeated, we'll have to wait and see. But this is the game that is a pivotal game, I think, for that division. I think the winner of this game is going to win that division. I think potentially Penn State is going to beat Michigan in Happy Valley. I think Michigan could knock off Ohio State. And then you're going to have the number two, three, four, and five tiebreakers, potentially. All right, so this is my chance. I got to go to the horseshoe, see the dotting of the eye, the house that Woody Hayes built. I, I can't wait. I, at some point, I got to get to the horseshoe, shake hands with Mr. Big Nut himself, you know. But, yeah, even though because they're basically Iowa's daddy. I mean, yeah, they're, we're like, they're like the Pedro Martinez instead of the Yankees. Ohio State just owns Iowa. Much respect to Ohio State. They deserve it. So that's where I'm going to be. I was guessing you were going to see the, the Trojans, the men of Troy, back-to-back -back weeks in USC, uh, USC-Oregon um, for a, what could be a, a Ooh, big yeah. game out there in the yeah. Pac-12. And also a shame is that game possibly wins the next time they'll play. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a season unlike any other for the current Big Ten members and then the US, the uh, L.A. schools. This is This is it. You're never going to see a season like this ever again. Ever again. Well, maybe, but... No. It's be a while. Be a yeah, while. be a while. But excellent. Good, good, good. Um, okay, we got week, week nine. nine. Week nine. What you got? I love to see Utah be so physical with USC. I'm going to go now to Utah okay. and see them play Oregon. I've got quite a few West Coast games, Pac-12 games on my schedule here. Again, not. I love the football across the country. I don't get to watch that enough. Also, a good thing, you go to the West Coast. This was my Hawaii idea. You go to the West Coast, you wake up, you're watching football from the time you wake up. At 9 a.m. It's, be it's beautiful. <laughs> Out in Hawaii, you mean earlier. Um, but, yeah, I'm going uh, Oregon at Utah. Okay. And that's where I had you paid going to. I so got I another one. you going to. Yep. And that's exactly where we're, we're going together. Look at that, you know. Friends, partner, you know, my co-host, but never partner, but still. <laughs> we're going out to Bryce Eccles there in Salt Lake City. I mean, you could have just like a Pac-12 episode of a Pac-12 road trip specically because the Pac-12 is going to be absolutely loaded. I mean, it's going to be, I already said, the Finally. most competitive, deepest conference this year with the quarterbacks. But that's why I think they might come up short of getting a playoff berth because they're going to cannibalize each, each other. other no one's going to go undefeated in the Pac-12. It ain't going to happen. It's just sick. So, yep, that's where we're going. We're going to Utah to see that big game. Cam Rising and uh, Bo Nix, right? Is it USC? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, so, Oregon. Oregon, yeah, Bo Nix, Cam Rising. Bryce Eccles is always off the hook there when you watch it on TV. So that's where we're going. All right, so now we got week 10. Uh, week, week 10 we're together again i think probably more than likely so once again if you like what you're hearing subscribe comment like share let us know what you think are we missing your town do you agree disagree or hey if you happen to go to this campus site make sure to hit up this pub this eatery i want all the information i can we need some recon all right because someday this is going to happen i hope at some point mm -hmm. all right week 10 man this was a tough one but i got a feeling too wow <laughs> LSU at Alabama. I mean, enough said. That's, that's enough one. said. Enough and, said. And, and I was telling Blair I was yesterday or this morning. I 
I believe LSU is going to be going to be in the running the re- the whole year this year. Yeah, I think um, so too. Tough tough schedule. Um, you go on the road to Mississippi State. You go on the road to Alabama. Uh, and there's another one I might have Blitter going on the road somewhere else too on to Mississippi. It's a t- tough road, but I think Brian Kelly gets the job done. He does, and um, this might be the year. Yep, I love this. How can you not go down to T Town to watch this? This uh, traditional rivalry. Fest. All right. Some might say this is the greatest rivalry in college football. I-, I can see that, but I disrespectfully disagree. But I like how this is now potentially going to be a rivalry again. Mm-hmm. I mean, Alabama really has, other than the Joe Burrow year, that miraculous year out of nowhere. But it's nice to see this be ignited again with last year LSU in that fashion, walk off in overtime. And that was really the final dagger in Alabama. Mm-hmm. You're not going to lose two regular season games and make the playoff. You're just not. No. That was it. So it's great to see this potential rivalry renewed. And what did I tell you guys two seasons ago? I said give him four years with how he recruits. I know you're not really a big fan. Brian Kelly will win LSU a title in four years, and he's already well ahead of pace. I mean, the guy can coach at Notre Dame. I think they just got a little spoiled. They weren't, ah, he's not good enough. But what he did there with their academic standards, but now it's a little bit lighter, you know, putting it nicely, you know, for SEC academic standards. No offense, once again, it's just the truth. Now he's it's more of a wide-open recruiting uh, base and format for Brian Kelly. I mean, he's just stuck. One of the best coaches that no one still ever wants to talk about. Yeah. Most winningest coach in Notre Dame history, by the way, too. The consistency you won in Notre Dame, going down where he has more resources and a, and a better recruiting base. Yeah. It's going to happen at some yeah. point. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's definitely – that was a shoe in there. Exactly. I mean, that was – like, that, was, that wasn't even a layup. That was like a freaking – Skyhook, you know, Kareem style, even more accurate. It's in, all right? It's just over, all right? So week 12. Man, 11. don't forget 11. Oh, it is a week 11. I'm sorry. My apologies Just once again. my turn here. This is one of the four that I have struggled with. Ooh, I can't wait to hear. Let's see. Where are you going week 11, bro? And I'm going with your argument of the Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State being good, and I'm going to, uh, to Penn State to see them play Michigan. Okay. Um, do I think they could contend in that division? Yeah, they can, but I, I, I don't anticipate them winning this game. Um, and for you, I have you going down to Florida with Miami at Florida State. Mm, I like that. I do. I may or may not get to the Sunshine State. All right. But my week 11, sorry, let me bring this up because, you know, I'm older. My memory's going. That is true. It is older. true. Yes. That's why I keep my hair short. Week 11, I am going back to the West Coast. And I'm going to go see USC at Oregon. I'm, I got to check out Autzen Stadium there in Eugene. I want to ride out on the back of the Harley with the duck. I want everything. <laughs> I got to see the world-class track and field stadium built by the man himself, Phil Nike. I got to check out everything that Eugene offers. That's where I'm going. And plus Phil the, Knight. Phil Knight. Oh, Phil Knight. Yeah, it's not, it's not Phil, Phil Nike. Sorry. Well, Phil Knight Nike. How about that? All right. Okay, so I made a mistake, you know, no offense. You know, geez. He is, See? He is Nike, though. See, there we go, yeah. See, he's not the best in the business for uh, for nothing, folks. <laughs> it's, not all, it's not all looks, it's also brains. There we go, see? <laughs> there we go. Yep, so that's where I'm going. Because, I mean, you hear all the stories about Eugene. So, and then, once again, Pac-12 is going to be just loaded. It's going to be must-see TV. Stay up late this year. Watch the Pac-12. you got to do it. See, even, even another perk for going to Eugene, the Dutch Bros, co- Dutch Bros Coffee and Tea. Dutch Bros. It's a, okay. West, it's a West Coast coffee chain, tea chain, in parking lots. In parking lots? You drive through. There are some in-store in locations, but it's okay. another good, good reason to go out there. Hmm. What other things can you buy in a parking lot drive through I wonder. Probably is recreational off, off is, rec- is recreational that, authorized in Oregon? That, I think that, it is. That's, that's, that ain't my bag. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. What else are they sell in there in the parking lot legally? All right. Microwaves that fell off the back of trucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stereo. Equipment. There we go. Stereo equipment. So we're getting down the nitty gritty already. We only got two weeks left. Yeah. Wow, this is crazy. Two weeks left, and I'm handcuffed. Blair's he handcuffed me. I got to go to an Illinois on the road game. Yeah, I, I saw the road schedule. I'm sorry. It's it's okay. It's got to be some venue you're going to want to see, right? But I think I know where you're going. I think I, I would have heard about it. A lot of choices. A lot of choices coming up. <laughs> but once again, if you like what you're hearing, please. 
comment, like, share, subscribe, get involved. We want to hear from you. So week 12, and I think I remember hearing you say this is kind of a, a week, a week, 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 week yeah. right? A soft, not maybe Charmin soft a week, but pretty soft. Very. Okay. So me, you know, and this is really a lot of layup week in that one conference that has to play an FCS school every year. The conference that 14 out of 14, I believe, are playing an FCS school this year. Not to say what conference that is, <coughs> SEC. <clears throat> so there's not a lot on the docket. But, I mean, I had to get to old Rocky Top. Ugga, Georgia mm. goes on the road to Tennessee. I haven't been to Knoxville yet. I mean, I want to get there. The checkered uh, end zones, the uh, Neyland Stadium fleet. You know, off the river there. I mean, 100,000 plus singing uh, Rocky Top. I mean, got to check it out at some point. I believe, what, is Smokey there? Uh, mm -hmm. there? Smokey the, the volunteer mascot, dog? Yeah. yeah, you know, the little the little hound dog. You ever actually listened to the words, lyrics, or sang Rocky Top? It's a little disturbing, actually. Mm, I know it, it's, it's a little Except out there. Except Rocky Top, but, Tennessee. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah, other than that. How about you, Brett? Where are you going week 12? I know you kind of struggled maybe with this one a little bit. So... In my handcuffing, I have to go Illinois at Iowa. Got to do it. Um, which, again, your road schedule with Iowa going to Penn State, that was a no-brainer for me. I didn't have too many options. We saw Illinois, Iowa a few years back at Illinois. Bad weather. Mm -hmm. Lovey should have been fired. He got an extension instead. 56 to nothing, oh, I think it was. so bad. Iowa it, scored maybe every we, single possible way. It was, it was good. not. It was not good. <laughs> and somebody did not want to leave at halftime when we were getting wet and cold, and it was awful. But for Blair's picks, I think that's that's the more enticing ones on this. He brought them up. I'll mention them. I originally had them for Georgia State. It's a tough game. Georgia State, LSU. It's a barn burner down there, um, down in Baton Rouge. But I couldn't pick LSU against this tough opponent because we've already seen them. I already had you seen them three times. Yes. So then I was switching over. You mentioned Tennessee. I like Tennessee. How about UT Chattanooga against Alabama? Second to last week of the season, tough. You don't think that's a good one either? Um, is this like a the second edition of the spring game? Because Alabama gets more from an inner inner uh, squad scrimmage, I think, than playing what the moccasins. I think of Chattanooga. So it was unfortunate. I can't have you like, in that game because I already have you at Alabama or elsewhere. So we then had to go out west again. Okay. You're gonna see Utah, Arizona is where I was anticipating you going. Um, I overlooked Tennessee. I, I overlooked that one. Yeah. Um, Head and Hooker was was still playing for them. I oh yeah, that one. absolutely. I, that one. I mean, he would be another Heisman finalist. He would have been last year, and someone told you guys that until he got hurt. He was well on his way to probably winning the Heisman Trophy. He'd have been like thirty two next year too. I mean, yeah, hey, still a young 32. man compared to some of us. He's a young man. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking maybe you're going to check out North Carolina at Clemson. That's Clemson. Neither of us have mentioned Clemson. I know. Clemson. I know, right? And I think maybe That's we'll do we'll, let's do something on the fly here in a little bit when we wrap this up. Okay. Okay. Clemson. So I was thinking going to Clemson because everyone everyone's bit bullish on Florida State. I am too, but Clemson's going to be just as good. Can somebody else potentially in the ACC step up, like North Carolina, a Miami, a Pitt, to maybe say, hey, what about us, right? Okay. So I thought maybe you might go there. That could be a huge game to shake and, up the ACC. And going with your episode last week, Pitt is a team that's going to be consistent. Yes. Year, they're not flashy, but year in and year out, we're going to win games they probably shouldn't win, and they're not going to they're not going to lose games they shouldn't lose. You're saying Coach Pat Narduzzi is not flashy? No. No, not at all. No. Think about going to that dinner party, Coach Narduzzi and Coach Ferentz of Iowa. That'd be, oh, that'd be, that'd be an pillow. exciting one. Bring the pillow. <laughs> that'd be an exciting one. <laughs> all right. So here we go. You know what? What week? Oh, I'm sorry. It's week thirteen. Week it's thirteen. You. But you blew this one. I had you Michigan, Ohio State, but you already blew that Ohio State matchup. Um, Ohio State host going to a Ohio State game. So for me, I'm going Michigan, Ohio State. You got to go to the big house for this. I mean, this is at Michigan, I believe, right? Uh, let's take a look. Let's see. I thought this one. Whatever uh, it is, I'm going. Oh, yeah. Well, then I might have maybe broken the rules. You I could, might break the rules here. You might have a double. I believe this one's up in uh, Ann Arbor, I believe. Which is even better, because I, if I could see Jim Harbaugh lose at home. Oh, wow. I would It is really... a Michigan, yeah. Oh, it's a Michigan? It's a Michigan. My bad. My bad. Michigan. So you don't Michigan. have a big house. You don't have one. There we go. Yeah, this is, this is the game. I mean, it's the biggest game. 
every year in our conference, the biggest game I think every year in college football. Sorry, LSU, Alabama, I know great rivalry, but this is the rivalry. I mean, this is, might be not just the best rivalry in college football, but maybe even all sports. I mean, Duke, North Carolina, it's there. I mean, this might be the greatest rivalry game every year in sports. It is intense, physical. Yeah. Um, get some surprising results every yep. once in a while. Yeah. Um, the way, I believe, was it last year that Michigan ran all over him? All over him. I mean, just pummeled them, took him inside yeah. the telephone booth. It was, and just... it was not pretty, but then Michigan had a game they should have lost to Illinois. So I, yeah, it's, it's always interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, going to this game at some point, I'd love to, but good luck getting tickets. Mm. Especially now that you're saying it's crazy how the script has been completely flipped when Ohio State completely owned this rivalry in throughout the century until Coach Harbaugh comes. He's slow out of the gate, finally got over the hump a couple seasons ago, followed it up back to back. And slow out of the gate, and a lot of people wanted to run him out. Yeah. Well, he kind of almost wanted to run himself yeah. out, you know, basically flirting with the NFL. But going for three wins in a row. We didn't get that little dance this year, did we? The NFL no. dance. No, we did not. But I think I think this is a huge game, not just for the playoff. I mean, it definitely has playoff ramifications. But the Big Ten East throughout college football. And if Ryan Day happens to lose another one. Three in a row. Three in a row and maybe only has one or two losses this season, which they got a lot of they got a lot of potential question marks that Ohio State team, but they're still Ohio State. They recruit a different level. Is he maybe going to get run out of town? I mean, Ohio State coaches have been gone, ousted before for not being able to beat Michigan. Sask uh, Cooper, that coach Coop, could never beat him. It would be surprising, especially if they only lost one or two games. It would be surprising, but again, if you can't beat Michigan, yep. what are you doing? That's it. That's it. All right, but man, that was fun. Got all 13 weeks. Boom, boom, boom. That's great. So I think we saw some great, great sites, great stadiums, SEC, Big Ten, Pac-12, uh, Mountain West. I mean, we kind of, uh, what, uh, yeah. Mountain West to Hawaii? Yeah. The yeah. ACC. Was, ACC, we were a little yeah. Light on the ACC. We were. Did we even see an ACC team? I don't think Miami. I... Miami. You saw Miami. Well, I predicted you to see Miami. Yeah, I don't think I saw a single... Miami, Florida State. No, I did not. I, I did not either. A single ACC team. Wow. I had some Clemson possibilities. Yes. Yeah. Um, but... Didn't pull the Yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun. I mean, that was great. I would love to do this at some point, hopefully, when I retire, the kids are in college or out, we can get an RV, Patty and I, and just travel around. But RV, Clark. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. That's right, Clarky. <laughs> That there's an RV, Clark. Don't you be falling in love with it. <laughs> gotta, gotta love Cousin Eddie. Let's do this on the fly, all uh -oh. right, because you brought it uh -oh. up. It's okay. How about let's name two or three places that we wish we could have gone or we could go, we just couldn't work in. Why don't you, is there, we'll do one at a time. What's maybe one expect, place? I did see Miami. We too, I forgot so long ago. Yeah. Um, I would probably. Where you like to go? A Texas game. Okay, Probably down in Austin. One. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Georgia at home um, would be one. Tennessee, you got to Tennessee. I didn't get to Tennessee. Florida at home um, just always seems to be. Down the swamp. I don't know how good yeah. they're going to be this year, but when they're good, I'll yeah. have to see that. Down the swamp. All right. Um, and probably that might be it. Maybe Oregon. I didn't get Oregon. Yeah. For me, I thought you were going to say this because Memorial Stadium, uh, Clemson, mm -hmm. South Carolina. They come down, touch the rock, you know, I forget what the rock's name is. I just had it. It's out. But going to see a Clemson game in uh, at Clemson, uh, for me, another one, I mean, I've got at some point get to Death Valley uh -huh. down in Baton Rouge yeah. for a night game, especially where earthquakes register on the Richter scale. So going down to LSU. And I definitely, I'm a little bit torn because, well, I'll tell you, the other one, it's between the Coliseum out in LA, or I gotta go with Memorial Stadium down in Lincoln. I mean, the sellout streak, the red balloons. But if it's just, hey, one, what one stadium do you wanna go to? Whether there's a game being played or not, it's gonna be Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl. I'm sorry. So, but if that is where I'd wanna go first and foremost, but this is just, and I'm sure I will. Whenever UC, Iowa goes out to UCLA, I'm gonna be there. That's just how it's gonna be. 
but yeah, those three. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Memorial Stadium in Clemson, and Death Valley down in uh, Baton Rouge. Yeah, I can give you the, I could give you the Clemson and Death Valley. I can't get on board with Nebraska. Nebraska? Oh. Eh. Eh, yeah. See, Nebraska fans, I don't mind sorry. you at sorry. all. I'm sorry. And yes, you beat us last year, but come on, you know. Matt Rule, great. Oh, real quick. Oh. He's going to get them. He'll get those boys to turn it around six bit. wins. You guys will make a bowl uh, game this year. But that's it. I mean, this has been a great episode. I'm glad we we're able to do this kind of on a whim. I mean, I want to thank Brett again for being involved. Hopefully we can do this again yeah, sometime. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. Thank you guys, as always, for your support, your time, attention. Please remember, you drive these episodes. You drive this channel. Please comment. I promise I'll get back to each and every one of you individually sooner than later. I want to hear from you. Comment, like, share, subscribe, smash that subscribe button. And once again, thank you, Brett, for everything. Guys, I'll be back next week for my probably my favorite episode every year. My bold predictions, crystal ball episode, which really is kind of the kickoff of the college football season for me here in the Touchdown Black and Gold vlog. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it. I'll see you next week. Stay safe. Have fun. And thank you for joining us, us, on this special episode of the Touchdown Black and Gold Vlog. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.